Hello web developers, uh, welcome to a project walkthrough video for the ex advanced markup assignment. Uh, this is a part of Watts 3010 Introduction to Web Development at Seattle University. Uh, this project is uh, focused on building a little three-page website about Edgar Allan Poe. And we're, our main goals are to learn something about HTML layout, uh, meaning how we get pages uh, or elements to lay out properly on a web page uh, using HTML and CSS. Uh, we'll also be looking at how we link files together um, and how we do uh, accessible table table layout, so tabular data presented in, a, in an accessible format. Um, that is kind of a mouthful to say. So, uh, so that's what we will be working on today. And I encourage you to work alongside. Uh, you can uh, clone out this repo and um, and work on your own. So this is how we get started. We're going to fork it, and I'm going to fork this into my personal account. And once this finishes forking, then I will be able to clone it to my Code Envy environment. That's where I'm uh, doing my work. If you're working somewhere else, you can clone it uh, just using the clone URL. But um, here I'm going to import a new project to my workspace. I'm going to choose GitHub and click the load repo button and say OK. Uh, had to update a little SSH key there, which is fine since I've already signed in. Uh, I just have to select my personal account. If you only have one account, this will show up by default anyways. And then I have to scroll down uh, to my advanced markup, Watts 3010 advanced markup repo and say import that and it will import this project into my workspace a blank template is fine this is a simple um, project and now I can twirl down the basic or I'm sorry not the basic markup uh, the advanced markup folder here and I can see that I have my Edgar Allan Poe picture and I have uh, my readme file and my index and, and all of these things so um, these are all of the files in this project so I can see them all here, and that's what I see now in Code Envy. So that's great, and uh, we can easily um, start work here. So we need to pay attention to the to-dos in the HTML file. So we haven't had many to-dos um, in previous projects, but to-do is a very common way of noting things that have yet to be done in a file. Uh, so it might be that you're working on something and you see a way to improve something but you don't have the time to do it right away or that you're doing one part but you know that there's another part. So here we have a to-do and it says add proper hrefs to links and if we look here we can notice that um, these hrefs do not have any links in them right now so uh, they would not go anywhere if a user clicked uh, those links. Um, we also have a to-do here that says make this list be a horizontal navigation. So that's interesting. Um, so there are, uh, there are to-dos sprinkled throughout the files. You can use uh, find replace. Um, so you can always say find and um, look for to-do and say search. And it will show you in each file where the occurrences of the to-dos are and, and even link you directly. So that is a very useful way of making sure that you didn't miss any to-dos. And then, of course, as we work on them, we will be removing the to-dos from the file because once you have done them, then it makes no sense to have a to-do comment. Remember that any comments you have in your files should be helpful for a, another developer coming to look at these files to work on them. Uh, so having to-dos for things that you've already done is not helpful to somebody who's new to your files. So uh, the next thing that we need to do is add the href values so that we can navigate around the website between all, all three pages. Uh, we need to style the navigational list so that they display horizontally in the header and the footer of the page. Uh, we need to add internal links to the in-text citations. Um, we're going to uh, use the little super tag around the in-text citations to make them look special like little footnotes. right? Um, we're going to uh, make an accessible HTML table. Uh, and then we are going to uh, use a definition list and we're going to do a little bit of floating image and caption and we're going to we're going to float a couple things um, in the files uh, like our, our sidebars and things like that 
But for now, uh, we can just dig in. And the first thing, you know, so obviously we need to pay attention to all of the to-dos. Um, there are things that are not mentioned in this list that you still have to do, and they are marked out with to-dos in the file. So you're going to want to look at those closely. Let's start by uh, adding the links so that we can just navigate around this. Because if we open up the index.html file and preview it here, you will notice that we have um, links that don't actually do anything. They make the page reload because by default, when you click a link to another page, it just um, it just links you to uh, itself, right? Like, if you, or if you if you have a link that has no href, then it's just going to link back to the same page that you came from, right? Uh, so we need to actually add the proper hrefs to the links. And um, the first one that we have is a home link, and that needs to link back to this get us to the index.html. And often uh, you'll see people use this slash, which is fine in some situations, but in many situations you want your website to be sort of more portable. So in this case, if I link to the slash, it's actually just linking to this code envy.io but notice how all of these directories are um, are down here that's all gonna get lost because I use that slash because the slash is what's known as an absolute link and it the slash indicates the root directory of the server so that is just gonna link to code envy.io so if I uh, refresh this page and I hover you can see down in the bottom of my uh, web browser that codeenvy.io is where that slash is pointing to. If I inspect this, and I highly recommend using the inspector a lot while you're working on this project, um, then you can see that the href is just the slash, and if I hover over it here in the inspector, it says that's going to resolve to codeenvy.io. So if I click this, then I'm going to get just my dashboard, right? Because that's codeenvy is going to redirect me. So I don't want that. Um, I'm going to go back to uh, the page that I was editing, and I don't want to use the slash at all because any URL that starts with either an HTTP or a slash is a, a, a absolute URL that will break in this case. And we don't know um, exactly what path is it might be before our website, but we do know that this page always lives right next door to these to um, all of these other pages. So we could reference these other pages with the file name. So we can just say index.html and it should link to index.html. And then here we could just say aboutpo.html and it should link to aboutpo.html. And then here we can say interpretation.html and it should link to interpretation. So if we come back here and we refresh, now we can see as we hover over these, we can see that it, it looks like it's probably linking correctly. So let's go ahead and click about. And we are on the about po page. So that's great. Um, now on this page, none of these are linked. So if we click anything else, we won't go back to the home. But if we use our back button to go back home and we click on interpretation, this is the interpretation page for the website. And we can go back again, and if we click our home link again, we just go back to this home page. So we know now that these links are working properly. So what we need to do is make these links work on every um, everywhere else. So I'm going to go down here to the bottom navigation, and um, once again, index.html, aboutpo.html, and interpretation.html. And I'm actually going to need to do that in each of these files to complete the navigation. So I'm going to do that. Now, uh, you might be wondering why not just copy and paste uh, all of these from, you know, across each page. And that actually could work, um, but there is something that we need to, uh, to keep in mind. Um, Notice that we have this active class here, and right now we're in the about po page, and the active class is on the link for the about po page. Um, notice that uh, here the active class 
is on the link for the home page because we are on the index.html. So we need to make sure that we keep um, these links uh, properly defined. So it's no problem to copy and paste on the same page. That works totally fine. But if I go to the interpretation page now, I need to make sure, notice now the active class is on where interpretation link is. So I'm going to just fill these in and then I'll copy and paste them down into the footer. And that way uh, these will be totally good. And we will have our linkage in place. So now if we come here and we refresh this page, which I did by hitting just Command R, you can Command R or Control R if you're on Windows. Um, if I click About Po, then I go to the About page. If I click to Interpretation, then I go to the Interpretation page. Interpretation page, I can click back to Home. I can click in all the different directions, and I can see that all my links on all the pages are actually working properly. So um, this is good to know. I can now uh, keep on working. But before I do that, I should actually go through and remove this to do everywhere where I had add proper hrefs to links because that has been done. So link, oh, and don't make a, a bad selection error <laughs> like I just did there. So keep, keep in mind, be, you know, go a little bit careful, but, um, remove these to do's so that we know that they are to done. <laughs> okay. So, um, that is the first big requirement. Um, add proper href values so the navigation links. Great. So the next thing is style the navigation lists so those links display horizontally on the page in the header and the footer. Um, okay, so here's our style sheet. We have no styles in here right now. So I'm going to have to figure out exactly what what style do I want to write to make these lay out. So I know that what I need to do is make these list items show as inline or possibly even inline block. Uh, you know, you can make a choice either way works, no problem. But I know that that's what I need to do. And so let's take a look at where these are. So up here in the header, I have a nav element and then I have this unordered list and the class is top nav, okay? Down in the footer, I have a nav element and I have an unordered list and the class is bottom nav, right? So what I'm thinking, and I think that's the same on each page. So nav and then unordered list, top nav, nav, and then unordered list, bottom nav. So I think actually I could se select these list items, which is what I want to make go display inline by selecting a list item that is in a UL in a nav, okay? Um, so to write that selector, I, I need to provide the selector a way to drill down to the specific thing. So I want to say something that's in a nav element and then in a UL element and then is a list item. And remember, spaces mean inside of that element. So this is a list item that is inside of an unordered list that is inside of a nav element. And then if I say display inline, then I can, um, I should see that these lists become horizontal. And I do see that they're horizontal. And that is excellent. And the horizontal also by default removes the bullet. So that is great. Um, I could also uh, say, for example, um, I could say I could put a border around these. And I'm just going to put a black border around them. And then if I do that, I want to give them a little padding. And this will kind of make them look a little more like 
buttons. And so now we can see that we have that border and that is, uh, that's pretty cool. And that we have that down at the bottom as well. So great. Uh, we have now made uh, those navigational lists display horizontally. Um, but remember, we had actually uh, these active classes. So look, let's t get rid of these to-dos. And we have those active classes that are on some of those links. And we should be able to, uh, we should really be able to um, make those, like the link for the page that you're on right now should look special, right? Um, so we can do that by styling that active class. And we can just style dot active and define that as a class and anything that has the class dot active, we can say that we want say um, the font weight to be something pretty bold, like 900 is very bold. Um, we could also say uh, that we want um, a background, for example. Um, so all C's is a pretty light gray. Um, and that might also mean that we want to do a little, uh, a little padding on there too. Um, and so that'll make it possibly stand out a little bit more. So if we refresh, we can see that we now have, so that wherever we click will look like it is selected. So the user will be able to know very easily kind of what page they are on, right? So that's, that's pretty cool. So I think now we've removed all of those to-dos, we've done some fancy stuff. Um, that's all excellent, we've made these lists display horizontal, um, so that's cool. We now uh, need to add internal links to the in-text citations. So what does that mean exactly? Well, um, let's go for example to um, the interpretation.html page. And what we can see here is that we have a couple of links here that are our, uh, these are our resources. And here, you notice in the square bracket, we have like this two, and we should have another one uh, somewhere. So we can command F for square bracket. It looks like there's the other one right here where we have the one up here and the two down here. And so that one needs to link down to here and the two also needs to link down there. So if we look at the actual HTML code, here's, um, here's our to-do, find all the bracketed footnote references. They look like that. Replace them with the proper soup tags and links to the footnote at the bottom of this page using internal anchors. So that's internal page navigation. And um, what we can see down here is that down here we have a, an unordered list that says bibliography and these list items have an ID on them. So you can link internally to an ID and that will cause the browser to scroll down to show that ID in the viewport. So um, here we are, we have uh, citation-1 and citation-2. So if we go up here um, to where we see this one, we first want to wrap it in the sup tags, which means um, that it should be super positioned, which means it should be raised a little above the line. And then we want to wrap it in an anchor tag. And I'm just gonna leave the href blank for the second. So what we need to do is link it to the ID citation-1. And so just like in CSS, we refer to an ID with a pound sign, and then we say citation-1, and that should link us to that citation on the interpretation page. So let's go ahead and scroll up to the top here and refresh this page. 
And you notice now that the soup tag made this become super positioned, so it's up higher, so it's a little more noticeable. And the whole thing is linked now, so that looks pretty good. And if I click this link, it scroll this down to the bottom of the page where it can bring this into view. Now, it would have scrolled this all the way up to the top if there was more page below, but since this is at the bottom of the page, this is as far as we can scroll. We can't scroll anymore past the bottom. But um, but often, like if you if you had a link to just analysis, it would scroll it up so that analysis would be right up at the top of the page like this. Um, so let's go ahead and put in the other link uh, for the other footnote, which is actually much lower on the page. And so here we want to wrap it in the sup tag to superposition it, and then we want to use the anchor tag. And this one is going to, again, the ID, so we use the pound sign, and citation dash two. Some people call those the hashtag sign. <laughs> it is a hash, um, but it's also uh, the abbreviation for pounds. So there you go. Um, if we refresh this page now, we have a link here on two. And when we click this, you'll notice that it doesn't actually scroll the page anywhere um, because that is still in our viewport. But if we, if we actually uh, made this much smaller and pretended like we were, say, on a telephone, um, then when we click that link, notice that it scrolls us back down. So if we scroll up a little and we click the link, it does scroll us down. So there we go. We do have um, this, this link functional. So that is excellent. Um, what we can do is scroll back up here and get rid of this big to-do note. And then we can return to our list here. Uh, we need to build an accessible HTML table listing selected works provided in the selected works PDF file. So um, if we go over here and we click on this selected works PDF, we can't read it in this context. So that's, that's not that helpful. <laughs> um, but if we go over here, uh, we can actually uh, click, and I, I used, held command to click and open it in a new tab. We can actually uh, see this. But we can't actually select out of here, um, which is kind of bad, but it, it also could be um, not that bad. Uh, we do have another way to get to this, which is in the CSV file. Um, so if we, go in here and we open up the CSV file, here we have a CSV export. And this CSV export is a little bit strange um, because uh, it does have some bad data in it. And this is really pretty common. Um, we're often given like resources that we have to clean up a little bit before we can fully use them. Um, so we could, for example, uh, just get rid of these obvious uh, parentheses, which you know who knows what caused that exactly. Um, we also should probably have triple quotes around everything, um, although that is a, the novel um, probably um, doesn't need quotes around it, I guess, and the play doesn't need quotes around it. So, okay, that makes sense why those don't have uh, triple quotes. Those should be italicized. Um, triple quotes in a CSV world means uh, that, that that's just, that would turn out to be a single quote if you imported this into Excel or something like that. But for us, we don't really need these triple quotes. So we could just use like the find replace um, and uh, do a find um, triple quote search. And well, so it's going to show us that. Um, this is where you wish that you had done more homework on how to use your editor uh, before um, before starting your video. So uh, so this will show us um, kind of everything uh, that we found. We could use it to, to go through all of this. And somehow, I bet we could uh, get it to um, auto-replace all of those. Let me... Uh,
So after a bunch of looking, I've decided that there is not a convenient find replace in uh, the editor here on Code Envy. So we're just going to work from this, anyways. That's okay. Uh, what we need to do is uh, basically get all of this stuff into our file, and um, and so I'm going to copy this. And then we're going to go into the about po file here. And you will notice that um, here uh, in this area, we have a table tag that is started. And we need to create an accessible table structure. So uh, there is a good article on the web aim uh, site about making uh, accessible table structures. And it's really just about intelligently using uh, the um, about intelligently using the actual uh, information. So, um, or I'm sorry, the, the tags and the attributes properly. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to caption this uh, selected works uh, with format and date, something like that. Um, of Edgar Allan Poe. So we will uh, have a nice caption there. Um, and then uh, we will start building out a table. Now, um, you might be wondering, why did you copy all of that stuff, Sean? Well, I'm actually just going to paste it right in here um, so that I can just work sort of from this data and, and get it into shape. And if you look at the actual page now, um, if we click to the About Po page, you'll notice that this looks a mess right now, right? Um, it's very kind of crazy looking. But as we work through this, it will um, it will shape up and look uh, quite good. So, um, so the first thing that we need to do is uh, we need to put in a row for our top header on here. So TR is the uh, is the, the table row element and then we're going to make headers in this row and it's going to be year format and title Although, I think it might be better if it was year, title, and then format. Um, hard, kind of a little bit hard to say, actually. So we'll leave it like this for now because that way we don't have to flop things. But, you know, our, our stakeholders might decide they want it, something else. Now, we're using these TH tags because TH means table header. And so this will allow any assistive technologies to provide organization and sorting and things through this. Um, but it's important to know exactly what the like what this is a header for. And these are headers for columns. We expect there to be a table where we have um, uh, a column and uh, a uh, the column and the row. And so we're going to make this one uh, scope equals column. And if we look here in the uh, web, oh, it should be call, not column, excuse me. Uh, we can see though that that's, this is basically how we want to do things. Now, uh, I said before that we might not rearrange these things, but now I'm kind of thinking that maybe we should because we also need to have scope uh, a table header for each row and the table header for each row would probably best be the uh, title so I'm actually gonna swap this around so that title is the first column and then what we can do is um, we can make a table row and I'm gonna do this with no real data but I'm just going to say scope equals row for this table header, and it's going to be the title. And then TD is just for table data. And so I'm going to say that's year. And then 
that's format. So, so right now what this does is this gives us sort of a template that we can follow for each of our um, each of our other entries. So I'm going to copy this, and um, we can uh, we can actually paste it, sort of. just after here a few times and then we can look at, at what this looks like here and you can see that we have all this junk stuff up here which floats up there but then over here we do see title year format title title year year format and this is starting to shape up into a table now obviously we need to size the table and stuff like that properly but um, what it means is that we can start uh, we can start working on um, actually getting these things in. So, um, so what I like to do is actually go below the data and then um, start pasting in uh, make sure that I've pasted in however many we're going to need here, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And there's probably 20 or so. So I'm only going to do a few of them here. But basically, what you have to do is just uh, cut information and put it in properly. Um, and then. And then you can. Uh, sort of be done with that. And um, remember that um, if you triple click, it will select an entire line. And if you double click, it will select um, a word. So I can easily uh, pull out the little parts of these and put them in their right area. And you can get going pretty quickly on doing that. And, um, and so that's how we fill in all of this stuff. And then um, once you're done, it will look uh, much better. And you can uh, refresh. And you can see here we've got titles. And all of our titles are bolded. And then um, the headings, year, and format are bolded. And then all this content is there. So headings, table headings are automatically bold. Um, we could do more with this table. Uh, we could say, um, for example, we could make it uh, width and say that that should be 100%. That's cool. Um, we could say uh, text align left, and that will make things kind of show up a little bit nicer. And then, of course, once we've got something that we want to keep, we can copy those, come back over here to our style sheet. Uh, we can organize things. We should we should probably organize our style sheet a little bit. So I'm going to say navigation styles, and then down here, since I'm working on the table, I'll just say table styles. And that way, if I always put my styles here, it'll be easier for me to find things. Um, oh, I shouldn't have pasted this. So I'm just going to say table. Since I only have one table in the whole site, it seems safe to do that. And then if I refresh this, now you can see uh, that this works out. You can play with, um, you know, uh, borders and stuff. You can do background colors and cells and things like that. You know, so um, you can you can do a whole bunch of stuff to lay this out in a way that actually makes sense and works. Um, so once you've got uh, once we've got that table set up and it's accessible and everything, and um, then. Uh, it says that we want to add a definition list to the um, biographical summary in the aside on the about po. And so if we look at this, we have an aside with the ID sidebar. And it does say have a to do here to make the sidebar float right. Um, and we have that actually in all of these areas. Although the sidebar contains different stuff, on every page it does have an aside with the ID sidebar. And it wants us to float that right. So actually, let's let's go ahead and make that um, make that happen. So 
I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say sidebar styles. And I'm just going to say pound sidebar float right. Now, we won't really notice it floating right unless we do a couple of other things. We want to say the width should maybe be like uh, 25% and the background should be pink so that we can see kind of what is the space that this is taking up on the on the page and so uh, here when we refresh you notice that our sidebar now is over on the side and it's actually that way on every single page because we changed it in the style sheet so since every page had a sidebar defined we can now see what this looks like um, and so we can touch up uh, this sidebar style in a whole bunch of ways. Um, a couple ways that we might want to do it, um, especially uh, right away, is we might want to modify our bar margin, uh, which we can say give it 20 pixels around the outside of the box. And if we refresh now, you'll notice that it will bump in from this right side. And notice that it's, it's now got the 20 pixel margin around the outside. Um, and if we select this, you notice over here in the box model, we can see 20 pixels all the way around the outside, but we still don't have any padding, and that means that our text is bumping up against the edges. That's called tombstoning, when your text bumps up against the edge of a box, and it's not good unless you're working on the latest issue of Wired Magazine. So um, we're going to say padding, and the padding on the inside will make it less than the margin. We'll make it 10 pixels, but that will be enough so that... Uh, our text won't be quite up against the edge of the box. Now it looks much more comfortable, right? Now obviously you could use all different kinds of backgrounds there. You could use borders on this um, and you could change the stuff inside this box as well like we're gonna do in a second. But this, this is there on every page now and so we could get rid of those to-dos um, as well which would be a really good thing for us to, to do, <laughs> to get rid of those to-dos. Um, I'm going to get rid of it here because that's where I'm working and then uh, just pretend like I got rid of them on every single page and you definitely should. Now here we need to use a definition list to format the information below and we have born, died, alma mater, and spouse. Now notice that here this just all smushes into one big chunk of text because we have no HTML to format this, right? Uh, so we're supposed to use a definition list and so to do that we're going to start a DL that is definition list and it's supposed to contain all of this stuff so we're just going to wrap it over there now definition lists have don't use list items inside of them they have two other elements that they use one is a definition term and that is going to be uh, something like born here right and then they have a definition definition there can be for each term there can be multiple definitions so uh, if, if you imagine that you were actually using this to provide like a glossary of terms then um, you might end up with uh, you know something that that has more than one definition and that would be okay um, we also could enhance our indentation here to make it clear that these um, these things uh, belong there belong to the terms the definitions belong to the terms um, and once you get into the mood on this then you can uh, you can kind of move pretty quickly and uh, You want to use your um, control and command buttons on your keyboard and your arrow keys to move this quickly. So I'm doing all of this with my with just arrow keys and by using command left and right and up and down and stuff like that. So um, so now I have these all structured out inside of this definition list. I have my definition term and then my definition and then my definition term and then my definition. And so I should see some formatting applied here. And so if I refresh this, you'll see now that the, the term stays out here and then the definition itself starts over here. And so this is really excellent. 
I could even enhance this even further um, by, uh, I could come in here and I could say like, here's uh, about page styles. And I could say DT should have a font weight of 900. And then all of these terms would be bolded and that makes them stand out a little bit more. So we can uh, definitely work with lots of these HTML elements to get really cool layouts and stuff like that and we can modify them in a ton of ways. Um, now that we've done the definition list, um, on the about page we need to float the image and caption. Um, so that's actually something that we did in a previous assignment as well. Um, so on this page we have uh, to do, um, so fill in proper formatting markup as needed. Um, so there might be ways uh, to do better formatting. Like for example, if you have a dash between two dates, um, that should be an M dash is gonna look better there. Uh, so if I save that and go here, um, notice this is what it was before. And now if I refresh, you notice that it's a longer dash and that's that's actually typographically correct now. So if you are a stickler for typographic formatting and everything, then that's that's a good thing. Um, also, uh, note that like you have the bio photo here and we want to float this photo. So I'm gonna get rid of this to do and then I'm gonna get rid of this to do. Um, so we wanna float the photo and give the paragraph some kind of visual style. So that's bio photo. Um, that looks like something that we could work with. So we could we could come down here. That's on the about page. So we'll just do the class for bio photo, and then come in here and say um, width uh, could be again you know like twenty five percent. We could say. Uh, float right and background uh, we can make it um, just light gray for now and if we save that and we refresh we should be able to see something like that notice that these two things overlap um, so we might decide that we don't want to actually float it to the right it might be better to say float left. And then if we refresh it, now the picture goes on uh, the other side. Um, now that we have this class, this style started, we could um, notice that it's actually, the picture is actually going outside of the box and it's still showing. So if we select this image, if we experiment, if we make this width, 100% then it it's going to take on the width of its parent container which is that box and then we can say height auto just to make sure that it stays um, in perspective and now you notice that the the image is only the size of the um, of the box itself of the parent element itself so let's go here and say bio photo and then any image that's inside of a bio photo we want to apply those styles to that image. And on this bio photo, let's make sure that we add some margin. Um, so we could say 10 pixels margin and padding could be five pixels padding. And if we refresh now, now we get like a much nicer looking box and we've got like a little thing that looks like a border around the picture. It looks very nice. Um, this text, maybe we can make it a little smaller or something like that. We could change the size of the page and you notice how these boxes, because we size them with percents, they are changing as well. So um, that's a fun experiment to work, work on and, and try those things. Um, but in general, we've, um, we've sort of basically hacked together a bunch of this stuff. We have, um, for example, on this, on this page, there's some to-dos to get rid of the bullets on this poem and everything, so we need to make up with those. Um, there's uh, a few other 
uh, miscellaneous things that we need to do to get these pages all set up. And then obviously we should try to create some more appealing uh, visual presentation, you know? So think about different fonts that you might want to use or different ways to treat this heading and title or uh, different ways of treating the text here in the poem. What colors would you put on this page? You wouldn't make it look like Pepto-Bismol on the sidebar, right? You would probably make it look better, right? Um, so think about all of those things and at any point in time, remember, you um, are strongly encouraged to commit and don't forget when you commit to push your committed changes to master. So I'll say first wave of work and I will commit and that is going to uh, push those to the origin as well. And then I'm just going to come right back here to my copy of this uh, repo and I'm going to go into settings and set up the GH pages deployment so that I have everything all good to go um, so that I can turn it in uh, when I need to. And I'm going to copy out this uh, URL and I'm going to go back to my main page here and hit edit and paste this URL in here. And then now anybody who comes to my repo has an easy link that they can click and they can see my page running. Um, sometimes it takes a few minutes when you start a new repo to get it up there there it goes Woo! but on future updates it'll update much more quickly and so and even that only took a minute or so so um so now uh i have everything good to go so if i need any help or anything like that i can easily point people to both my repository and my deployed code and i can get whatever help i need um and so forth so um have a good time working on this project i encourage you to uh experiment with your styles and everything and really see how far you can push um, the site to look like something that you're really proud of. Uh, you could practice using clear on your footer to bump the footer down below the sidebar all of the time. Um, there's all kinds of, of additional things that you can do. Dig into the resources and the additional resources and come up with some ideas and apply them uh, to these pages. Uh, make more of it than just the requirements. All right. So good luck with all of this. Have fun working on it. I look forward to seeing everybody's projects posted up online. Take care, everybody. Goodbye.